not going under this screen right here. Stop. You're just giving up a wide open three. This is the easiest ball screen to hedge ever. Okay, so I'm going up, and this player is hedging. Why? Because the sideline is right there. The second that ball handler picks up his dribble, brings his dribble back, hesitates, which literally has no choice other than to do that with the sideline right there, I can bump back. In the meantime, I can have backside help coming from right here. This player can occupy these, sink down, occupy these two heat players two passes away. But I'm able to bump you back in less than a second, so it's not going to matter. But instead, you go under and you give up a wide open three. Yeah, I can't run drop coverage here because, look, at you're letting Bam Adebayo get way too low on this court, okay? That can't happen. Look where he's catching it. It's too low. and It's just going to be an easy jumper. So, again, we're going to hedge this. Uh, this is an empty side ball screen, so we're hedging. Second that this guard hesitates, picks up his dribble, brings his dribble back, does anything other than attack off of this big hip, I can recover. In the meantime, backside help comes from over here. This player can occupy these heat players two passes away. But again, I'm going to be able to bump you back quickly, okay? Because the, fur the further, if, as long as, when, if this player attacks off my hip, he's just going further away from the play. So, but yeah, I mean, instead you're running drop coverage and bam out of bio. It's just too easy for bam out of bio. Transition, you get back to bodies, not random spots on the floor. Look at this player here. This is, go you're just jogging to nowhere. Back up. Right now, someone's got to say, I got ball. Okay, so now this player knows. I got to go here and find a body. Instead, you're just jogging to the middle of nowhere. And so, of course, it's going to lead to a wide open three. All right, shot goes up. If Jimmy Butler's going to cherry pick like this, this player's got to start to go. Not everybody can stick around and uh, try and get an offensive rebound. you got to go back now, now, now. Because if he come up with this rebound and you don't, this is what happens. You can't go under a ball screen set near the three-point line like this. That doesn't work. Here's how you can go under, okay? When you switch this ball screen, stop. you got to get up and guard Kyle Lowry. Why? Because that means the screen gets set here. Now I can get up, jam the, well all the way up here, jam the screener with my body, show my hands, and now I can go under. Kyle Lowry is not taking a three from here, okay? And if he does, you know, we can live with that. But you're walking and you're letting the screen get set way too low. So now when you go under, now it is realistic for Kyle Lowry to hit a three. I uh, no. See this drop coverage, you just give up a two-on-one. What happens in two-on-ones? Bad stuff. So, again, let's take a look. This is an easy ball screen to hedge, okay, mainly because look where the, where's this player rolling to. The backside help is right here, okay? But in the meantime, the second this ball handler hesitates, picks up his dribble, brings his dribble back, does anything other than continue to attack off of this big hip this way, which just pushes him further away from the play, uh, I can recover. Uh, I can go from hedging to recovering, okay? And then that means his backside defender then can bump back to his man. But instead, you want to give up a two-on-one, so, what don't? What are you angling your body for this way? Come on, get flip your hips, okay? Make this player use the screen. Or if he wants to drive the lane, cool. There's a second defender right here. But look what you do. You angle your body this way, so now we can't help until the rim. So now look, now it just allows uh, that big to roll, and it's an easy two. Jesus. Don't, for the life of me, understand what this player is doing right here, okay? You have to see your man in the ball at all times, taking your eye off neither for more than a second. Look at how long this player is ball watching for. Well, uh, Jimmy Butler, you're, the guy you were guarding, is now here, okay? So, of course, now Jimmy Butler catches this ball way too low, and at this point, there's nothing you can pretty much do. It's just hope and pray that this doesn't go in and it ends up being a two-shot foul. Okay, this player here does a great job being in the gaps. Look at this player being in the gaps right here, getting uh, this Jimmy Butler's dribble picked up. See that? Boom. Nice job. So now Jimmy Butler's dribble's picked up. Get out to the corner. Get out to the corner. There's no reason to be standing in the gaps when the dribble's picked up. There's nothing more for you to accomplish. Get out. But this player is going to stand around and not look. Now it's just going to end up being a three-shot foul for Miami. You have to be seeing the ball and your man at all times, not taking your eye off either for more than a second. Right now my head's got to be on a swivel. i got to be seeing ball. i got to be seeing man. When you take your eye off your man for more than a second, this happens. Backdoor layup. Edge this ball screen. Look at the, Look how close to the sideline this is. The second this ball handler hesitates, picks up his dribble, brings his dribble back, 
which he has no choice to do in like less than a second because the sideline's right there. I can come over here. In the meantime, this player comes over here in backside help, but I'm bumping you back in less than a second anyways. Instead, you're in drop coverage and you give up a wide open jumper. Don't lean towards the screen. Look at this. Make this player use the screen. You start leaning towards the screen. Now it's a ball screen refusal and a wide open jumper. What is this player doing? You cannot take your eye off the ball or your man for more than a second. You certainly cannot fall asleep on Jimmy Butler, which is exactly what happens, and it's a wide open three. Don't hug Jimmy Butler. You can't hug your man. If this player's here to set a cross screen, let it happen. It doesn't matter. This player just needs to jam this player as he comes through this cross screen, and this player gets on the other side. When you hug Jimmy Butler like this, now he can create. See how he just created space right there? So now look, now he's going to get into a flare screen, which you have no chance uh, to have this to uh, to alert this player and have him go over. So now look, now it's a flare screen, and we get a wide open three out of it. This is elementary basketball right here. Okay, shots up, stop. I got to get find this player, get into his jersey, use my butt, push him out. Give him a 0% chance of getting this ball. This player isn't going to box out at all. So now look, now it's an easy tap back and a wide open, well, eventually a wide open three. Stop being in drop coverage. Look at this. How easy is this for Jimmy Butler to just turn the corner and get to the rim for a layup? Okay, let's see if we hedge this screen. Again, this is right next to the sideline. So if I hedge this screen, there's no place for Jimmy Butler to go. The second he hesitates, picks up his dribble, brings his dribble back, I can bump back to my man. Okay, in the meantime, we have backside help right here. This player needs to kind of slide down and occupy these Heat players two passes away. But again, I'm going to be able to bump this backside defender back in less than a second. But instead, you're in drop coverage, and Jimmy Butler just blows by his man for a layup. All right, you go under the first, and then they twist screen the second. Okay, stop. On the second, you're going. You're in drop coverage. This is a mess. Up, push this guard out this way. The second he hesitates, picks up his dribble, brings his dribble back. Does anything other than attack off of this big hip? I can recover. In the meantime, backside help can come from right here. This player can occupy these Heat players two passes away. But again, I'm going to be able to bump you back quickly. But nope, you want to run drop coverage and create a two-on-one. How easy do you want to make it for him? And it's a two-shot foul. Don't lean towards the screen. Make this ball handler use the screen and our ball screen defense will execute. When you start leaning towards the screen, nothing good happens because now our ball screen defense can't execute and this player's just going to get right to the rim and an easy shot. Edge, the Heat are in the bonus. So if you're feverishly trying to fight over the screen, you get called for a cheap foul like right here. The Heat are going to the line. So look at if we hedge. Okay, again, big is up. We're pushing this guard out this way. The second he hesitates, picks up his dribble, brings his dribble back, which is going to be pretty soon with the half-court line literally being right there. Okay, I can recover. In the meantime, uh, we have, well, we're hedging. We have backside help right here. Okay, this player can occupy these Heat players two passes away. But again, I'm going to be able to bump you back quickly. But instead, you're trying to run drop coverage. This player's feverishly trying to fight over the top. Cheap foul, Miami to the line. All right, the Heat are in the bonus. If you're gambling for this loose ball, you have to show your hands. Okay, look at this. All right, going for this loose ball. Show your hands, or all you're doing is going for the ball. Any type of contact with a Heat player sends them to the line. So look what happens. Are you showing your hands and going for the ball? Again, the problem with drop coverage is look at this. You're just letting Bam Adebayo roll freely. Look at this. So now Bam Adebayo, this player's got to step up and backside help. It's an impossible situation. And it's a two-shot foul. So again, we need backside help on Bam out of bio. We can't just let him roam freely. Up, push this guard out. You know the drill. Second he hesitates, picks up his dribble, brings his dribble back. Does anything other than attack off of this big hip? I can recover. In the meantime, this player needs to step up and backside help. This player needs to sink down and guard these Heat players two passes away. Okay, but again, I'm going to be able to bump you back down quickly. But instead, you're letting out a bio roll wherever he wants to, and now Heat are back to the line. The Heat are in the bonus, so you have to show your hands. Why can't I see this player guarding Jimmy Butler's hands? So what's he going to do? He's going to get his hand in the cookie jar, swipe through, uh, foul, Heat are in the bonus, two shots. Cannot happen in transition. Stop. Somebody has to get to Jimmy Butler. Okay, that is non-negotiable. Right now, you got to fly over to Jimmy Butler. 
Why is that? Because right now you should be here, okay? And when he crosses the three-point line, we're initiating contact. We're battling for real estate now. We're making him earn every inch on this floor. Well, of course that doesn't happen because this player's standing in the middle of nowhere. So look how low Jimmy Butler is going to catch this ball. Look at this. And who's initiating contact? That's Jimmy Butler. So now he's got you sealed. There's nothing we can do about it. It's an and one. Can't run drop coverage with Jimmy Butler as the screener. Look at this. You're just letting Jimmy Butler roll wherever he wants to. He's catching this ball way too low. And here you go. It's a, That's an and one again. So let's take a look right here. Again, we, can, we have to have backside help. you got to hedge. This player's got to step up and backside help. This player can occupy these Heat players right here two passes away. The second this ball handler hesitates, picks up his dribble, brings his dribble back, does anything other than tack off this big hip, which just pushes him further away from the play, can recover and bump you back, which is going to be quickly. But nope, let's run drop coverage with no backside help, and now Jimmy Butler's just going to catch this inside the lane and and one. Okay, you, why are you slowing down here off the steal? Look at this. This player's sprinting, and now he's slowing down. What? I'm sorry? Like, right now, th this st st steal gets made now. Just sprint, sprint, sprint. Get underneath the ball. Then we can possibly get a stop. If you slow down like this, now we have no possibility of getting the stop because you're never underneath the ball. Don't go up the gut of a down screen. Stop. You got to chase this way. You go up the gut this way. Only bad things happen. And right here, it's a wide open three. There is no such thing ever as jogging back in transition. Sprint, sprint, sprint. Make sure you're ahead of the ball. Look at this jogging. Are you kidding me? So now you're never ahead of the ball, and it's an and one. There is no such thing as ever jogging back in transition until your feet are set. Watch that player. Look at this. He's going to jog. He's going to jog. He's never going to get his feet set. He's going to backpedal wide open three. Stop. See, we don't need two people standing in the same place. This doesn't work, okay? Why, why do we have two Hawks lined up next to each other? This player's already in and in the gaps right here. This player needs to get out. When you have two people standing right behind one another, look. Now this player's going to screen this man, and it's a wide open corner three. This is one of the more pathetic one-on-one -on -one defensive showings you can see. Again, sprint back. You have to get your feet set and be in a defensive stance. Look at this player. Jog back. Now backpedal. Backpedal some more. Backpedal some more. Feet are never set. And now Jimmy Butler just blows by, gets to the rim for a layup. Get back to bodies, not random spots on the floor. This is a random spot on the floor. Get up here and find someone to guard. Guess what happens? When someone's guarding nobody, that means that someone's left open. There you go. Okay, you can't give Jimmy Butler space, okay? You've got to force him into a second defender. This player's not in position the right way, okay? Where should this position player be? He should have his left foot parallel to the block, right foot out wide stance. Now this player's up the line, and you're ma the only place Jimmy Butler's going is right here, where there's a second defender. I can stunt, easily recover, because I don't have to move my feet inward. But you have to get up and force him here. When you when you sag like this, you're not forcing him anywhere. So now he's able to cross over and hit an open jumper. Get up on Jimmy Butler here. Come on. You can there's a there well, first of all, it's, it starts as a strong side ISO. So if we if you get up, you're forcing him possibly into the second defender, then this player can come here, this player rotates here, this player rotates there, and you rotate there. The other reason that you need to get up is because the screen's coming. So now I'm up right here, okay? I'm making this screen happen. I'm going to make this player use the screen, and our ball screen defense will execute. But you sag, so now look. Now Jimmy Butler's going to shoot right into you, and it's a three-shot foul. Don't go towards the ball ever in transition. You sprint back, sprint back. Give us an extra number on defense. Anything, anything towards the ball's gambling. Trey Young is going to go towards the ball, so we just lost you in numbers. And now it's going to lead to a dunk. Can't be in drop coverage. You're just giving up a two-on-one. Two-on-ones lead to dunks. Okay, let's back it up. Off of this ball screen, we're hedging. We're up. We're pushing this guard out this way. The second he hesitates, picks up his dribble, brings his dribble back, does anything other than attack off this big hip, I can recover. In the meantime, where's this player going? Seriously, backside help is standing and waiting. And I'm going to be able to bump you back quickly anyways.
But instead, nope, let's give up a two-on-one and make it just way too easy. Okay, you got to get up here. It's a strong side ISO. There's no reason to sag. Get up, okay? Look at, look at, look at this. We can just, this is so easy to double team. You're up, you send this player this way. Either, look at, I think this player is actually going to be in the gap, so I don't even need to worry about anything else. You're up. This player can stunt, dribble picked up, easy recovery, okay? But instead, you're sagging. You're not sending him where there's any help, and it's a wide open three. Okay, you run drop coverage with no backside help. What does it do? Okay, right here, this is going to be a miss, but look at the box out assignments. Everybody collapses here, so now there's nobody to box this player out, or the one player here has to box out these two Heat players. And look what happens. You get a missed shot, but look at this. Now that, that now this Heat player is boxing you out down low, and it's an easy two. So you know what we're going to do here. An empty side ball screen is the easiest ball screen to hedge. Okay, I'm up the line I'm right now. We're hedging. We're pushing this ball handler out this way. The second he hesitates, picks up his dribble, brings his dribble back, does anything other than attack off this big sip, which pushes him further away from the play, I can recover. In the meantime, I have backside help right here. This uh, Hawks player can occupy these Heat players two passes away. But again, I'm going to be bumping you back quickly anyways. But nope, you're going to run drop coverage. You're going to give up numbers. And not only does that lead to an open three, but on a miss, it leads to a way too easy offensive rebound. And put back. Here you go with more dumb drop coverage. Look at this. You're just handing Jimmy Butler the lane, and he's just going to go right to the rim, draw help, and it's a dunk. That's pathetic. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm just going to hedge this first ball screen. If I'm going to hedge the second one, I'm going to hedge the first one. Right now, look at this. I'm up, pushing Jimmy Butler out this way. The second he hesitates, picks up his dribble, brings his dribble back, does anything other than attack off of the player hedging, okay, which just pushes him further away from the play, I can recover. In the meantime, where exactly is this player going? Okay, I'm, well, the backside help can come from here. Because, why? Because this player can easily occupy these Heat players two passes away. And again, I'm going to be bumping you back quickly. But instead, you're just giving Jimmy Butler the lane. Like, I mean, you put the points on the board right when you let him do that. If you're Trey Young, you can't lean towards the screen either. See? I you can't lean this way yet. What is because what's that going to allow? Until this ball screen gets set and this player comes off of it, you got to stay attached to your man, okay? Because when you start leaning towards the screen, look what happens. That allows this player to instead of setting the angle of the screen this way, to set the angle of the screen this way. Look how he's going to reverse the angle of the screen, okay? But Trey Young was leaning already, is already leaning this way, so now Jimmy Butler just comes right off the screen and gets right to the rim for two. Hedging a ball screen, you can't let this player turn the corner. Stop. If you want to hedge this ball screen, you got to cut his dribble here. If he turns the corner when you hedge, like so, you're dead. It's a wide open three. See, look at if you hedge this ball screen as opposed to trapping it, okay? This player just pulled his dribble back. So this backside defender now, I can bump back over here. But instead, you're trapping. So now you put your defense in a puzzle. You also let him turn the corner, which can never happen when you trap. And a box out assignments get screwed up and it ends up with an easy putback. Talk about it all the time. You can never be in no man's land. Let's take a look at what no man's land looks like. Whatever this player's doing here, you're not helping out with the ball. You're not doing anything. Stay out. Why are you collapsing towards the paint? So because you're in the middle of nowhere, now that it's just going to be an easy kick out pass to your man. A uh, pump-and-go drive that draws another defender and a wide-open corner three. Don't need to switch this dribble handoff, okay? And if you're doing it, you got to be efficient with it. Like right now, it's switch, switch, switch. So right now, this player is here. Uh, this player is right up here. On a dribble handoff like this, all you have to do is just go through. See, look at this. You're just through, and you're able to guard, okay? If you're switching it, you got to be real efficient with it. This is a terrible switch because two people go to one, and that, of course, means a wide-open three. You're in drop coverage, so look at I mean, how easy is this? You're just handing the lane to this guard. Look at, look at that, and it's an easy and one. So let's go right ahead and not give this guard the lane, all right? Let's hedge. Let's push this player out this way. The second he hesitates, picks up his dribble, brings his dribble back, does anything other than attack off of this big sip, which just pushes him further away from the play. I'm recovering. In the meantime, I need backside help right here. If this player wants to throw a skip pass all the way here, I have plenty of time to recover, okay? But I'm going to be able to bump, bump you back down and recover quickly. But instead, nah, let's just hand Kyle Lowry the lane, and it's an and one.